Welcome to trigonometry. So this is the real start of trig. All right, we talked a little bit about angles in the previous videos, but some cat hair on my screen. Here is where the real trig big guns are coming out. So one of the main things that we're going to be doing is thinking about and looking at triangles inscribed in a unit circle. Okay, so if I look at a triangle, if I look at a triangle, like so, we can think of this hypotenuse I should have drawn the circle first. <laughs> we can think of the hypotenuse as the radius of the circle. So a unit circle, right? That just means the radius is one. Okay, so in this triangle, let's let's get into some vocab. Okay, this triangle, let's say it's gonna its angle is gonna be theta. The length or the base is gonna be x and the height is going to be y all right then this right here this uh point up here is the point x comma y if we think about you know having some if this angle is in standard form which it is then this right here is the origin All right, so there's a lot going on here, a lot of scribbles, kind of drew it a little small, but it's okay. This is the situation, it doesn't need to be memorized or anything, but this is kind of an introduction to the situation that we're going to be dealing with a lot here. So let me blow up this triangle. Not explode it, but draw it a little bigger. This is X, this is Y, this is theta, and this is the hypotenuse, this is 1, okay? So we always pick an angle in question, and this theta is our angle in question because it's in standard form. Okay, we don't care about this angle, the right one. We don't care about this angle, because it, that then it wouldn't be in standard form. We really care about this angle. So relative to theta, there are three sides, and we have names for them. Y, this is known as the opposite side. X, this is known as the adjacent side. And then the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse of a triangle. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is the side opposite from the right angle. I don't know where I'm going to write this. Let me erase this real quick. Say hypotenuse, which in this case is side length one. Okay, three sides of the triangle. Adjacent because it's the side that's connected to the angle. Opposite, you guessed it, it's the side opposite the angle. And hypotenuse is just the word we've been using since we learned about Pythagorean theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, whenever that was. Okay, so these are the three big names. And it depends on what angle we're talking about. If theta's up here, all those names change. Okay, so these are some, a little bit of vocab. We're really leading into this definition for trig. We're going to have a lot of very triggy words. That's a mathematical, mathematical word, triggy. We're going to have a lot of triggy concepts in this video. And if you know where they come from, it'll make things a lot easier. So let's review something else. Similar triangles. Perhaps you have heard about them. Remember the thing about similar triangles is that if you have two triangles with the same angles, of theta here, it's the same as theta there, then the ratio of their sides is the same. So we call this side... Uh, X, the side Y, and the side Z, these sides have the same ratios relative to each other as a bigger triangle. I don't know, maybe this one over here is 2X, 2Y. 
and 2z. They all have the same ratios. Trigonometry is all about the ratios. That's all trigonometry is, ratios. Okay, so when we have these crazy triggy words, we're just talking about ratios. So specifically, and leave room for six things. Leave a big room for six things. There are three ratios, right? How does Y and Z relate? How does Y and Z and X relate? And how do X and Y relate? We want ratios, all three of those ratios. Those are the only three pairs. If there are three numbers, there are three ways of pairing them. And so th those are ratios that we're looking at. So I'm going to have six equal signs here. The first ratio, let's say that's the opposite side relative to the hypotenuse. Mathematicians said we need words. We need ways to describe these ratios. What was one of the ratios? The opposite side compared to the hypotenuse. And we're going to have a word for that. Another ratio would be the opposite compared to... Whoop, that's the same thing you just wrote, Jason. Don't be, don't be daft. The adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And then the opposite compared to the adjacent. These are all the ratios right here. Okay? It's all the ratios we need. So these are defined by the angle. So when we talk about trig functions, they're basically just made up things to talk about the ratio that exists with a certain angle. Because it doesn't matter what the sides are, what matters is the ratio. So I'm going to write here sine of theta. When I write sine of theta, all that means is for a triangle, and it doesn't matter what size the triangle is, what's the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse for that right triangle? Okay. And then the other ones are going to be cosine of theta and tangent of theta. So if you want, this is the word sine, the word cosine, and the word tangent. And these are three of our six trigonometric functions. We're going to wait a little bit before talking about the other three. Just ratio, the sine of theta, just says if we have a triangle, what's the relationship between the opposite side and the hypotenuse side? And that's all there is to it. Okay, uh, we'll talk more about that as we, as we proceed, but let's use these a little bit. And if you have trouble remembering, there is a little way that you can remember. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. You've probably heard it before. Sokotoa. All right, we're going to be saying Sokotoa a lot. If you ever forget what ratio is what trig function, Sokotoa is going to get you there. All right, so leave those other blanks for now, and then let's get triggy. Example one, find cosine of alpha. And before you start freaking out, before you start going, I don't know what cosine is. What the heck is cosine? Cosine's a made up thing. Cosine makes no sense. Take a deep breath. Let's look at the triangle and see where we're at. Okay. So we have a triangle that looks like this, has a right angle here. This angle is alpha. And the sides are 15, 8, and 17. This is a triangle with an angle in standard form. Again, right, if we wanted to, you could draw the coordinate plane like this, 
And then that angle is in standard form, that alpha. Okay. So cosine of A, Sokatoa. Sokatoa tells us that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we write that down. Cosine of alpha is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. All this means is what's the relationship between some of the sides in the triangle? Cosine of alpha is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Remember, opposite is opposite the angle. Adjacent is touching, and there's two angles that are touching, right? It's the one that's not the hypotenuse, is the adjacent. And the hypotenuse is the longest side, the one opposite the right angle. So cosine of alpha really is just as simple as the adjacent, which is 15, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 17. Cosine, all trig functions, all trig functions are just ratios. The ratio of two sides. So the cosine of alpha is just the ratio of this side to this side. That's all there is to it. Even though, like, I, le I legitimately remember the time I learned about this in ninth grade. It was the first time in math that I just had no idea what was going on. It's like, what the heck is a freaking cosine, you know? It's just a ratio of sides in a triangle. All right, let's do another one. Example two. Find the tangent of theta for a triangle. It looks like this. Pretend that's a right angle. Theta is going to be up here. Let's say this is the square root of 13. This is 3. And this is 2. You have to be careful here. This is not written in standard form. And you could try to flip the triangle around and put it in standard form, but it might just be easier to try to do a little bit of a different method. What is tangent? Sokatoa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. All you have to do is identify the opposite side, identify the adjacent side, and then we're going to be good to go. Hypotenuse is always opposite from the right angle. Hypotenuse is the square root of 13, which we don't even need here. Adjacent is the other one that's touching theta. And then opposite is the one that's opposite the angle we're talking about. Remember, these words that are in red, if we're talking about a different angle, all the red words change. It's all in relation to the angle we're looking at. And as soon as we've labeled this, just fill in the blank. Opposite is 2. Adjacent is 3. The ratio of these two sides by this angle is 2 thirds. And I mentioned, you don't have to necessarily write this down, but I want to show you. I mentioned it doesn't matter how big the triangle is. If we make this triangle three times as big, the tangent of theta is still the opposite over the adjacent, which still reduces down to two thirds, right? So that's why it's all about the ratios. Even if we have two similar triangles, the tangent of that angle is still the same because the angle is still the same. All right. So we're going to do a little bit more with this because you might, hopefully I'm not driving you crazy. You're saying, Jason, you, you didn't fill in these equal signs over here. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten you. There's three more trig functions and they're just the reciprocal trig functions. So what happens if we flip this ratio upside down? Hypotenuse divided by the opposite. Hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. The adjacent divided by the opposite side. If we just flip all of these over, 
These are called the reciprocal functions, and here they are. Cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. All right, so it's a little weird, these names. We're not going to worry about these names too much right now. But here they are. Notice that in every row, there's always one co. What do I mean by that? In the first row, there's a sine and a co something. Second row, there's a co something and something else, a secant. And here, there's a co something. Every row has a single co. That'll kind of be useful in a later mm -hmm. video in this section. All right. You can always, everything in this class is open book, open notes. You don't have to memorize these. Just have it available to you. Okay. So I could also ask for the same example. Um, am I labeling this something else? Yeah. What if I wanted to find cotangent of theta? Well, you could use the definition of cotangent adjacent divided by opposite or it's just going to be the reciprocal it's always going to be the reciprocal that's why they're called the reciprocal functions it's reciprocal of tangent of theta all right we're getting close to this video being done Hang in there, maybe take a pause, take a break. We got one more example to show you how to use your calculator. Right, example three, approximate with a calculator. You can use a handheld calculator. You can use Desmos. I'll be using Desmos with a little bit of Google. There's a lot of ways that you can calculate these. All right, to uh, say four decimals. I'll talk about how to use Google and Desmos. If you have questions about using your handheld calculator, it kind of depends on what handheld calculator you have, but feel free to try to figure it out. Feel free to let me know, take a picture of your calculator and say, hey, how do I do this on mine? That's okay. All right, so for this one, what we're gonna have is let's start with part A going to be, how do I evaluate the sine of 30 degrees? In other words, what is the ratio for an angle of 30 degrees? What is a ratio of the opposite and the hypotenuse? That's what this tells us. All right. So to type that into your calculator, you can use Desmos, but Desmos really only takes radians, but there's still a little work around. All right. You know what's even cooler than using Desmos? Using Google. All right, so <laughs> you can actually just type what is a sign of 30. You have to type in degrees though, either DEG or degrees. Otherwise, it does a sign of 30 radians, which is different. All right, so the sign of 30 degrees is 0.5 or one half. according to the calculator. If you're using a handheld calculator, make sure it's set to the right thing between degrees or radius. This says that the, if we have a 30 degree right triangle, the ratio of the opposite and the hypotenuse is one half. That's really cool. That's a special triangle. They don't happen often. That's a special triangle we talk about in the next video, which will be not this long. All right, so we can keep on going with more of these problems. Part B, the uh, cosine of 45 degrees. Part C is going to be the tangent, 50 degrees. We're going to type these into a calculator and get more approximations. The cosine one is actually something really nice as well, but... Uh, I don't want to spoil it for you. This is actually a kind of a special number. 
tangent of 50. You can also type that into your calculator. Or again, just make sure you know that it's in degrees. Make sure your calculator knows that it's in degrees. Tangent of 50 degrees is going to be 1.1918. and so on. All right, let's do a couple more. RD, the cosecant of 35 degrees. I don't know whether Google can handle cosecant. I know that your handheld calculator doesn't have a cosecant. Let's see. Cosecant 35 degrees. Google, you did it again. Google is the most powerful calculator we have. 1.7434. But usually what you're going to do for this, if you're not using Google, if you're using a handheld calculator, you're going to type in one divided by the sine of 35 degrees because cosecant is the reciprocal function for sine. If you add secant, you do one over cosine. If you add cotangent, you would do one over tangent. Because these over here, remember, are the reciprocal functions. All right, but apparently Google, you can just type it in immediately. A couple more. Sine of pi. Cosine of pi over 4. Cotangent of 2 radians. Remember, if there's no degree, then it's in radians. All right, so you can type these into your calculator as well. And let's see what we get. And again, for these ones, you can type them in. Again, Google works. Or for radians, you can type them into Desmos as well. Uh, Desmos does accept radians. So sine of pi is actually zero, interestingly enough. Cosine of pi over four, let's see what that is. Wait a minute, that looks pretty familiar. 0. 0.7071. Again, that's a special one. We saw that over here, because 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4. And the last one, cotangent of 2. There it is. Desmos handles it as well. Or you could do 1 divided by tangent. Negative 0.4577. And again, you could also do over tangent of two radians but the most important thing here is that your calculator or google always knows degrees or radians all right so if you're typing it in there's a big difference between tangent of two which is negative 2.2 and tangent of two degrees which is positive 0 0.03 you always have to be very careful are you using degrees? Are you using radians? All right, Google is probably the best tool for evaluating this, unless you want to use your handheld calculator. Okay, let me know if you have questions about that. And uh, this video, which is way too long, is finally over with. Go have some pineapple juice or something. Or <laughs> whatever people do after too much math. Pineapple juice seems like, it. I actually really want pineapple juice now. I'm going to make some cookies after this. Anyway, bye-bye.